This is me, Jason. These are images of me at various coordinates of my life. Who I am from destination to destination may not be the same, but these fractals of my existence build a holographic picture of the personality who inhabits this ever-changing avatar. Immersed within the frenetic situations of chaotic routines that we call life, we forget that in essence, we are purely oscillating fields of energy. This world saturates us with information that triggers genetic responses to survive, to eat, to get rest, to get along, to be social, to conform. Clever stratagem. The simulacrum convinces us we are the house and not the inhabitant. We lose ourselves in dressing our bodies while starving our souls. But this has been the way for a very long time. There are hints that we have been here before, have run these races in the past. Routines, repetitive sequences, suppressed memories, haunted by recollections that seem not to be our own, and yet trapped within our own heads. Ghosts. There are spectral images floating within our being of former times and places, of courts and colonies, shipping decks and dungeons. This riddle of life is that one lifetime is not enough. The oversoul is of equity, and there is no fairness in the cards as they are dealt. Some are born into wealth and know not a single day of hunger in their lives, while others are born into a nightmare situation for which not a chance was afforded them from the moment they assumed this avatar. The clues are all around us. To judge all souls by the same standards requires a system that gave all involved the same chances, and this line of reasoning leads to inescapable conclusions. Our ancestors believed in the cycle of lives, that in death one goes through trials, is weighed in the balances, and is sent back. The same soul that walks the aisles of Walmart once died on ancient battlefields. School teachers and firemen, officers and lawyers in formal, former times, they lived their lives out as avatars of colonial plantations waiting for their twice yearly visits by Phoenician supply ships. Truckers, models, and pilots today don't remember when they filled the amphitheaters of the Aegean with their lyrics and their laughter. You may have walked the halls of Pharaoh, been a seamstress in Atlantis, milked cows in the hamlet that was later built up into the great city of York mined copper in the Great Lakes regions of the 3rd millennium BC in North America, or drowned in some Mediterranean war, chained to a trireme with 40 other screaming slaves sent to the bottom of the abyss. Homeless husks with hollowed eyes wander our streets today, unmindful that they once sat upon jewel-embroidered thrones. White supremacists sitting in their prison cells today, who, who they would balk if they knew, if they saw through time to the villages of the dark continent they once called home. In Tokyo, the men who hate their Chinese neighbors, they could not fathom how they once filled the ranks of the Khan's armies that sacked cities to fill the Chinese coffers. We mourn when our innocent youth are taken so early in life, our material programming inducing us to lament the unfairness of it all, unrealizing that the divine dictate even written in the scriptures applies, they are taken to keep them from the evil to come. These most holy spirits are removed because their continued existence within a particular avatar would only injure their purity. These souls move on and quickly return to fulfill divine roles within another avatar. These are the spiritual giants. Their shortened lives are in preparation for the great works that they will do in the next incarnation when they are really needed. 
torches against the coming darkness. You, your friends, family, and foreigners have all lived multiple lifetimes. You have seen countless conflicts, miracles, lived out legends, and outlived your own sons and daughters. Through the progression of time and empires, before the Ubayids and the Sumerians and the Akkadians and the Urartians, the Aryans, the Kamishans in, in northern Egypt, Persians and Romans, Byzantine Empire, the Arabian Saracen Empire. We have all been multiple cultures, multiple people. Through diseases and drought, our avatars have wasted away while the soul within is refined. It is strengthened. This divine personality is being forged into an immortal. Death is the gate of the holy. All souls are given the same opportunities. And when the cycle has come full circle, then the oversoul is justified. For every soul weighed in the balance will be examined. These lives we live are for the development of an eternal personality. We have not yet begun to really live. At this time, we are being built. As I always say, we are more than we suppose ourselves to be. Because this life is a path, a journey, the souls within it can't see the end destination. We are moving towards something great, but the building of something magnificent requires friction. The removal of base materials, the attrition of aggregates that we have mistakenly clung to. To remove the dross from the cauldron is to expose the silver beneath. The suspicion that this existence was illusory that the only things really real here are us, is very old. From ancient Egypt, the learned tried to piece together the puzzle, describing the kingdom of Seeker that souls travel to after death, to the hidden gate of Rostal, of resurrection and rebirth. Some described reincarnation and based future avatars off of past deeds, trying to make sense of it all. But I imagine that we have often come close, but never arrived at the truth. I imagine the fairness of an oversoul that would give all spirits the same opportunities, the same chances, the same gifts, and the same hurdles to overcome. And this would be accomplished simply by creating an artificial world where real spirits could live out artificial lives inside artificial avatars and be able to do it over and over and over again from different perspectives. And I imagine all this was necessary because the real universe is going to surprise us all.